This video was brought to you by Log Rocket, the front end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at logrocket.com slash YT. Hello developers. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build a custom dropdown menu component for React. For today's code samples, I'm going to be demoing them at CodePen. And then for the final product, I'll be showing you that over at CodeSandbox.io, just a little better suited for supporting these types of projects. So before we dive into the technical stuff, we're going to be doing a lot of coding today. Before we do that, let's quickly look at the visual structure of the dropdown menu component and decide on the requirements. So pretty simple or looks pretty simple. Uh, as you'll soon find out, it's not as simple as it looks, but we have here a header, a header title, a list, and then list items. This is the visual structure of our dropdown component and consisting of those four items. Now, if we wanted to code out some HTML to represent this, it might look something like this. Again, with the HTML, it looks pretty basic, but we need to do quite a few things. Number one, we need to be able to toggle the DD list when we click the DD header and then close it when we click outside that DD wrapper. Number two, we need to populate the button tags automatically based on data. And then number three, we need to be able to control the header title dynamically. And this is where parent and children components come in. Well, what the heck is a parent component? A parent component holds single or multiple dropdown menus. Since each dropdown menu has unique content, we need to parameterize it by passing information as props. So assume we have a dropdown menu where we're selecting multiple locations. Let's take as an example this state variable inside this parent component. We have a unique ID to use with the key prop of the map method when populating the location array. We then have a title for each item on the list, and in this case, it's various cities around the globe. And then we have a Boolean variable named selected in order to toggle the selected items in the list in case we have multiple selections in a dropdown menu. For example, what if we wanted to select both New York and Dublin? That's where the toggle comes in. And then lastly, we have that key variable. The key variable comes in handy for using with the set state function, which we'll touch upon in just a moment. But let's take a look at what we passed to the dropdown component as props so far. As you see in this dropdown component used in a parent component, we've passed a title to show in an array of data to populate the dropdown list. Before we edit the render method, we need the following state variables in our dropdown component. Let's talk about what we have going on in this snippet. We have a is list open Boolean variable for toggling the menu list and a header title, which is equal to the title prop by default. Now back to our render method. We have here a header and a list containing the list items. You might also notice this toggle list function and then this select item function inside this render method. And let's create those right now. What the toggle list function is doing is simply toggling the is list open state variable and therefore showing or hiding the items list. On the other hand, this select items function sets the header title state to the selected items title and sets the is list open state to false so it can close the list upon selection. After setting these states, it calls the reset then set callback function, which is a prop we need to pass to dropdown. We'll talk a little bit more about this coming up. Calling this callback function, updates the location state in the parent component and marks the clicked list item as selected. And so here's an example of the dropdown menu closed and open. Now let's talk about controlling a parent state from a child component. Now when you pass something as a prop to a child component, you can only use that data and cannot change it unless you deploy additional props. If you define a function in the parent component, which controls the state, and then pass this function as a prop to the child component, then you can call this function from the child component and set the parent component state. In the case of our dropdown, when a list element is clicked, we need to be able to toggle the selected key for the corresponding object in the location state of the parent component. We do this with the reset then set function passed as a prop to the dropdown component. 
This function clones the location state, then sets the selected key of each object in the array to false, and then only sets the clicked item selected key to true. Hence the name, reset, then set. This function is defined in the parent component like this, and then it's passed to the dropdown component as a prop. Let's take it a step further because this, so far, we've been dealing with single select dropdowns. Let's talk about multi-select dropdowns. Now, what we just saw was required for single select, but if we want to be able to select multiple items in the dropdown, we need a different function in place of reset then set. And we have a function called toggle item that we're gonna use for this, for this multi-select, because it only toggles the selected key of the items in the location array. Then we need to pass the function as a prop, just like we did before. And when we use it in the dropdown component, we can directly call it without an intermediate function, unlike what we did before, given that we don't need to set the header title or close the list. However, we still need to handle the header title so that we can show how many locations are selected. Like I mentioned earlier, we didn't set the header title in case of a multi-select dropdown, but no matter if it's a single or multi-select dropdown, we do need to handle the header title separately due to the fact that the list array passed might contain items with the selected key set to true by default. The component should be able to detect this and set the header title accordingly. Now, in order to handle this, we're gonna use the static get derived state from props lifecycle hook. And the purpose of of this is to enable a component to update its internal state as a result of changes in the props. It should return an object to update the state or return null if nothing needs to be updated. First, we're going to filter the list prop to see if there is any object with the selected key set to true. And if that's the case, that will be returned and will be available in selected item. Then we use this object's title key to set the header title. If selected item is empty, then we simply return the object where we set title prop to header title. But what about the multi-select dropdown menu? Well, when we're dealing with multi-selection, we can check the length of the items with the selected key set to true. If the count is equal to zero, then we simply set header title to default title prop. If the count is equal to one, then we're going to use a prop called title helper. In our case, this is a string value equal to location in order to be able to display one location on the title. If the count is greater than one, then we're going to use the plural form of location, which we provide to our component through the title helper plural prop. This prop is equal to locations in our case. So our component will have the following props if it's a multi-select dropdown. The last thing we need to discuss is handling outside clicks. Now, it's pretty straightforward to listen to click events on the window object and toggle the isListOpenState variable, but this approach requires some small tricks to make it work properly. Let's take a look at this code snippet where we'll add an event listener to the window object depending on the isListOpenState variable. This attempt results in a tooltip opening and closing almost simultaneously. Not a good user experience. The solution is to use the set timeout method with zero milliseconds delay or without any time delay defined so that it can queue a new task to be executed by the next event loop. Now, using zero milliseconds usually describes a task that should be executed immediately, but this is not the case with the single thread synchronous nature of JavaScript. So when the set timeout is used, it simply creates an async callback. There is one last thing we need to take into account with our multi-select dropdown menu, and that is we probably don't want to close the list when a single item is selected. Unlike the single select mode where it's just, okay, click one, close the menu, we're good to go. And to fix this issue for our multi-select, we need to call the stop propagation method on the on click event of the list items. And this is going to prevent propagation of the same event bubbling up to the parent elements. And therefore it keeps the item list open when the items are being clicked. In this tutorial, we built a drop-down menu component that supports both single and multi-select functionalities. We also learned how to control the parent component state from a child component by passing functions as props to the child component and calling them inside the child component. We 
also use the static get derived state from props method in order to update the state variables upon prop changes. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the tutorial, you can see the full tutorial in our blog post linked in the description below. And if you want to see more videos and tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also find more tutorials and videos we've already posted on our YouTube page.